shows no understanding of the content, no efforts made, poor aptitude of the relevant theories. R slash Pro Revenge. What is up guys, Mr. Reddit here, back with another episode of Pro Revenge Stories. R slash Pro Revenge is one of my favorite subreddits and I really enjoyed making this. So kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. We've got two awesome revenge stories that we're reading today. Our first story, Revenge on a University Teacher. After that, we're actually heading over to r slash nuclear revenge to read the group project fantasy fulfillment of your dreams. Before we begin, what's up to our new subscribers, Wolfie, Iwana, and Tammy. Great to have you guys. And if you're new around here, subscribe for new stories from Reddit every single day. Revenge on a university teacher. Hello, Reddit. I would like to start off with this is my first ever Reddit post, so accept my apologies for poor grammar or if any etiquette is broken unknowingly. I was reliving this to a few friends who pointed me here to tell this tale. Of course, names are changed for privacy reasons, etc. If any YouTube videos are made of this story, please link them as I love watching Reddit YouTube content. With that out of the way, let's begin. I graduated university a few years ago, and this story comes from my first year for my degree, I was in a business degree course, having enjoyed studies of business in school, and enjoying researching business-related topics in my own time. Before I go further, I should disclaim, I am autistic. This will be important later. It also explains why what I consider an interest in business for me may be considered an obsession by others. I am considered high-functioning. Whilst I occasionally struggle in social situations, it mainly comes off as me being rather blunt. So for the degree, we had several classes. Every class makes up a portion of the overall grade, etc. In the first year, we had no choice in regards of classes. The majority of the classes were really fun and engaging. My teachers were very supportive to me, and my classmates were too. I felt I belonged at university, whereas I hated school with a passion. At university, I could study and argue points beyond a linear construct of a syllabus. Basically, I am trying to say so long as you could prove your argument with academic credibility, you could make it and that debates were fruitful. I also had good relationships with my support worker who is there to aid disabled students and my personal teacher, someone every student is assigned who is head of a specific degree in discipline. One class, however, was horrid. On the first day of class, the teacher, who we will refer to as Mrs. B., came into the class and we all had out our laptops or notebooks. She began scrawling what I can only describe as hieroglyphics on a whiteboard. It looked like algebra, only worse. I have never been good at mathematics, breaking the old age autistic equals good at math stereotype. I was just typing notes blindly trying to write everything down, but it made no sense to me. At the end of the class, I introduced myself and explained I had a learning disability and that I might need some help going forward. She seemed dismissive, saying, It's okay. This stuff is easy. You would have learnt in high school. And then abruptly left. A few weeks passed, and I was taking down all the notes and still not understanding it. I logged onto the student portal website. It was there all our content was hosted, such as assignment briefs, reading lists, points of contact, etc. I was confused to find her class was the only one with nothing in the reading list. Every other class had several textbooks, journals, and other sources students could go to for extra information or clarification. After a class one day, I went to Mrs. B and asked if there was any reading material, like textbooks, that I could read so I could try to understand said theory, as there was nothing on the student portal website. She said in a very confident manner, As I said to you before, this is high school level stuff. Anyone would be able to do this. Simple work. I explained I struggled at math in high school, and that as an older, mature student, my school days were almost a decade ago. She shrugged and left the classroom, and I was feeling very frustrated. In any other classes, if I didn't understand something from a lecture, I could look it up in the textbooks, online, etc. To get a different perspective, if I still didn't quite understand, I could go back to a teacher and ask. They were happy to help me, as they could see I had attempted to understand said theory. During one of the classes, I raised a hand and asked a question about the value of x, as I didn't understand a certain equation. Mrs. B looked at me, smirking, saying it was simple, and asked if anyone else in the class was confused. 
No one else raised a hand or spoke, so she continued. At the end of class, I went to a lot of classmates asking for help. They confided in me that they also didn't understand that class but were afraid to speak out. This carried on for a month or so with me asking for help, writing the notes blindly, etc., until we were given our first official assignment. What I did work-wise, I was not proud of. However, in my defense, with not understanding the content, I was just trying to cobble something together. I would email Mrs. B asking to clarify bits, ask for help. My emails would be read, read receipt, but not replied to. I asked her about office hours, to which she replied, I don't do that. For context, office hours are time where teachers allow students to come to them with anything, such as academic problems, questions, career options, etc. All teachers offered them, just not her. I tried to hand in the work online. Our university has a policy. All work must be submitted online for cheat detection software and many other reasons. Mrs. B told us she would only accept paper versions and that the online portal was not to be used. When myself and other students questioned her, she said that she needed to see the work and its true potential and left it at that. So we complied, printed and handed in to Mrs. B on time. A few weeks later in class, she calls out students to collect their assignment papers, with grades. The thing is, she reads them out, not by name, but by grade order. We were all shocked. It meant the sooner your name was called out, the higher your grade, and the longer you waited the lower your grade would be. I waited and waited until I was called for it. I was very anxious and went back to my seat. I tuned out of the class and read over the paper. I had just scored a pass mark, but I was pissed off. Mrs. B had written comments such as, Shows no understanding of the content. No efforts made. Poor aptitude of the relevant theories. At this point, I was shaking with anger. I marched out of the class and she asked, where are you going? I didn't say anything. I didn't stop. I knew if I did, I would have got angry. I immediately went to see my personal teacher and support worker. It took them a long time to calm me down and said they would look into matters. After that, I went to speak to classmates who were read out before me asking if they could explain the theory. All of them explained they had no idea how they even passed, let alone get a high grade. Keep a side note of this. A week later, Mrs. B comes into class looking agitated, proclaiming a reading list of a single textbook was available on the student portal, much to the relief of other students. She also exclaimed she would now offer office hours for students with the same level as enthusiasm as someone would have for watching paint dry. Unfortunately, the book was not in our university library and we would have to buy it ourselves, which all students know, textbooks new are very pricey. I bought the book, but it made little difference with my lack of understanding. I spoke to classmates who did the same. They too didn't understand it. It felt like the book and the class were completely different. The office hours were another thing. I asked when I could see her. She informed me her next available spot was in three months time. I asked a classmate to ask her. She told him she could see him that afternoon. Another classmate was told it was a four month wait. Something was amiss. She also exclaimed some students were struggling with basic high school math and she would put some basic math on the student portal website. The problem was she had photocopied them from a book. The pictures were blurry so even if they did have useful content, they were illegible. Shortly after this, we had an exam on the subject. Again, I was worried I had no idea what to expect. I was in a different exam room to the other students as I get support in exam conditions as I struggle with some aspects of reading. I am also mildly dyslexic, so get a reader support worker. Part way through the test, Mrs. B comes in and asks if I am okay. I was a bit shocked. I never had teachers in an exam before, but maybe this is how they do tests at university? I stated honestly I understood nothing despite buying the textbook, despite coming to see her, despite seeing my support worker and despite consulting with my classmates. Mrs. B then proceeds to tell me the answers. Stunned, I say. What? She orders me to write. I look over to the support worker whose jaw has dropped. Mrs. B leaves and the support worker stops me and says, I have to report this. I acknowledged and the test is stopped. Afterwards, I speak to other students. 
Other students with special needs, she came and told the answers to, but not to other students. I was very concerned and confused and unsure what this meant for my grade. Months passed again of the same old. I would furiously take down notes blindly. My classmates and I in a state of despair. However, one day I asked another question in class, and Mrs. B, in a very snarky tone, said something along the lines of, You're the only student who doesn't get this simple equation. She looks out to the rest of the class, stating, Everyone else gets it. Slowly, one other student says, I don't. Then another, and another. I was reminded of the famous, I am Spartacus bit. She looked mad as 28 students out of a 30-student class raised their hands and objected, saying they didn't get it. Mrs. B, looking pissed, stopped the lecture, stating we couldn't behave so she wouldn't teach and left. A few weeks later, Mrs. B gave us what would be our final assignment for the class. She explained we had to write a report on a choice of reports as to how they use whatever algebraic theory we were meant to understand, and we had to do this in groups. In the assignment brief, we were meant to write the report on the report, but we weren't allowed to cite the original report. We asked Mrs. B for clarification. She explained it was academically lazy to cite any of the reports directly, and that instead we had to find the original citation from the report and cite that, making it a lot more work. We spent the next week just panicking. The reports were so confusing. There was no easy one to choose from. All of this bubbled up. In all my other classes, I was achieving high grades like 80s and 90 averages. Despite this, this class so far, I was barely passing at 40%. The whole thing led to a very bad mental health crisis. I won't get dark here. It led to intervention from local government mental health services. After this, myself and classmates arranged a meeting with high-ups at the school to discuss our issues. Up till now, we had done all informal process of talking to the tutor, reading the textbooks, and this new assignment was very, very hard. At this meeting, they asked why we wanted to see them. We explained it was about the class as a whole and the second assignment. They looked confused, citing there was no second assignment. We gave them the brief. These higher academics, professors, etc., eyes widened. They told us there was to be one assignment and one exam. They asked to see the reports we were to analyze. One of the professor's mouths dropped. The suspense and silence was palpable. They explained to us the reports we were to analyze would be set for master's degree or PhD students, and the first-year undergraduates were not expected to meet this level of work. They told us to cease the work immediately. They told us to put together a formal complaint and showed us the paperwork, single A4 sheet, to submit. Moments after leaving the meeting, an email went out to the whole year group from one of these professors citing work on that assignment was to stop immediately. Mrs. B replied to all stating students could still do it for extra credit. The professor replied to all students stating that was false and that she needed to meet him immediately. To any other student, they must have thought, what the heck was going on? To me, though, I was just singing internally, but I was not done. The complaint I went to homework on. I filled in all my academic notes, all the emails I ever sent her in this report. I went to classmates for witness testimonials for what she did in class. I approached and got a statement from my exam support worker and a copy of some classmates' exams who got a high grade. Reading the tests, I noticed we had similar answers to my work and that of other students. The grading was sporadic and random to be polite. For example, one of the answers to a question was 4x. I wrote 4x and got 1 point. My classmate wrote 4x and they got 3 points. I then discovered something very interesting. When searching her name online, I found that she was being paid by our university to do research into methods of using mathematics to make relative decision processes in a business environment. I decided to look into some of the aspects of that particular research grant and noticed they were very, very similar to the work she had assigned us in our unapproved assignment too. With this, I added this into my complaint report and decided to copy into my report the contact details of the funding bodies included mainly European Union grant sources due to my country, which included what repercussions would come about if funds were used improperly. Over a week, 
I collated my masterpiece. What should have been at most a three-page report was now a fully bound 120-page complaint report with an appendix, contents, etc., in full academic report style. I had some friends in a law degree go over it and advised me to seek compensation of some sort due to my mental health crisis as a result of Mrs. B., so I enclosed my request for some gestures of goodwill to be made by the university. I was not specific, as although I was high on the adrenaline of getting back at Mrs. B., I was still battling with newly diagnosed depression. Thanks, Mrs. B. I submitted it, having it bound specially for the occasion. Two weeks later, all classes with her were canceled. Not just for our classes, but university-wide. It turned out she broke a lot of academic rules. Mrs. B. had forged exam results, bullied an international student, and many other things. It was revealed she was using students to aid her in research she was being paid to conduct, which was the nail in her coffin. In other words, she was being paid to do research and passing said work on to her students without disclosure, consent, compensation, as she was being paid to do it, etc. It was a massive no-no in not only our student body, but other teachers as well. She was fired, with all professional accreditation lost. In other words, no way of coming back to the field of teaching. All students got an automatic pass and a portion of our student loans repaid as compensation. We lost many battles, but we won the war. I still battle with the depression to this day, but I graduated with first class honors, so I guess I wasn't that stupid after all. I am fine now, happily in a great job with a great wife and kids. Next up we've got... The Group Project Fantasy Fulfillment of Your Dreams I originally posted this on Pro, but got told to post it here instead, and then the post got axed, so here we are. Buckle up, kiddos, because I lived through fantasy fulfillment of the highest kind. Names changed because everyone changes their names for these things, and I don't want to be a black sheep. I won't bore you with the typical group project stuff. It was for a film class, and we were making a short film. Usual insanity happened with everyone showing up late and contributing ideas that would never work, etc. You've all been in group projects before. You know what it's like. The only really important part of all that is to know that this project turned into my baby. I sunk over 30 hours into one grade for an intro to film class that I didn't even need an A on to keep my A in the class. And there was one guy, let's say Keith, who never showed up for anything and listen to music during in-class group time. So we all hated him, obviously. He came up with excuses to miss meetings, like, I just forgot I had something else today, and, Rips. He promised to get us filming equipment and help film, so we didn't bother to sign up to rent any good stuff from the school, and then on the day of filming, he hits us with another, Whoops. So for our low-light film, we scrambled, and all we could get was a really crappy camcorder. Keith was our editor, so I sent him all the footage after we shot it. Then I crash. The day it is due, he texts me at about 1 a.m., waking me up. Hey, I was trying to grab everything tonight, and a lot of it was just like pictures or super duper blurry. Couldn't do much with any of it. You try sending it again or different? Then, a second later, another text. It's not due tomorrow, right? I scream internally while mentally processing. I simply say, it is due tomorrow, and then resend him the footage. He says he'll get a friend to help him edit it because time crunch. I send him a copy of the script because we shot out of order so he'll know what order to put things in. The next day in film, we watch the film. No opening credits, some of the dialogue is cut out completely, nothing is in order, and the shot for the end credits is just slapped in the middle of the film and lasts a whole 30 seconds of dead awkward silence. Everyone in the group, except Keith, is very, very upset. Keith admits his editing job was really crappy. He said that it was because he felt rushed from lack of time, and the teacher gave him five extra credit points for honesty. What can you do, am I right? We were all doomed to weep and suffer. Nope. He admits to a fellow groupmate, Michael, that he paid someone else to edit it without sending them the script, and then took credit for it. Oh ho ho ho, time for some revenge. The issue is that it's a his-word-against-mine situation. 
so I scan through the text to see if I can find something to help. Important to note is that I keep records of everything in group projects. If someone misses a meeting, I don't talk to them in person about it. I send them a text and demand an explanation for why and then explain to them why the meeting they missed was important. I had gotten into a few well-documented arguments with Keith that would, at least, prove he didn't put in equal amounts of work and get him docked. But then, I reread the texts between just the two of us, when I was half asleep and just wanted to crash, and he told me that he was going to give the footage to someone else and get them to do it and then just take credit for it. I had just completely misunderstood the message in my sleepy state. We now have the goods. We convince Michael to go to the teacher with it. Well, I don't, because Michael hates me, but the other members do. The rest of us join him and I bring my proof. We tell Keith we're going to talk to the teacher about how the group project went down and invite him to join us, just to give him a chance to defend himself. He says he will, but then... Oops, I forgot I had something planned. Us again. So we tear him apart, with him not present by his own violation, and explain everything. With ample amounts of proof of him being a terrible groupmate, and the teacher is obviously considering failing him on the project. Then I show proof of him plagiarizing the editing. Then Michael pipes up that he paid someone else to do the editing, which is considered a worse offense at my college. The teacher goes quiet, thanks us, and tells us we can leave now and that he will take care of it. Next class. No sign of Keith. We were all mentally prepared to have him start screaming at us because he was very much uh, an aggressive type of guy. He tried to bully me into letting him get away with inadequacy over texts multiple times, but all is quiet. We assume he dropped the class because of a failing grade on a project, or maybe the teacher just flunked him entirely and kicked him out. Whatever. We carry on with our lives watching films and kissing strangers because, you know, college students. However, Michael and Keith are friends on Snapchat. They bonded over hating me during the group project, a true love story. Keith had been silent on stories and on conversations, but then he decides that Michael was absolutely the one who ratted him out and blows up on him. Dude got expelled for what he pulled. Parents were furious at him and refused to pay for any more of his schooling, so now he's screwed out of going to college and there's no community colleges in the area he could go to for cheap while working because of the travel time. Getting to hear that the group member who almost made the rest of us fail and killed my personal pet project has pretty much his whole future plans ruined because of how he acted in our group felt sweet like nothing else in the world has compared to. You reap what you sow. We absolutely hadn't intended to get him expelled. We just wanted him to fail the project and us to be graded for the work we did instead of being taken down by him, which also happened. I got an A. But I can't say that I was upset about the outcome. Good riddance, Keith. I hope you're cursing your lazy self to hell and back. Got the group member everyone hated expelled and ruined his life plans because he plagiarized his meager contribution. That's all for now, but don't be blue. I'll be back soon with more stories for you. Remember to listen to Mr. Reddit every night so your dreams will be wonderful like you are and bright.